Cowboys Nation, it's your boy Mike Tag here and Kelly K9. We are getting this April started. New month, new hope. Maybe the Cowboys might do some. I don't know, but we've got a we got an action-packed month of guests. And I mean, it's just we got Crawford Kerr coming in. We got Jay Tuck and Malik Rose are gonna talk some college draft and football, all that kind of stuff. And then we also have Sherman Williams from from uh Alabama hurt my use. So I'm not happy about that. But we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. But we're going to get this thing started. Kelly, first of all, let me check in with you. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. I got a little bit of, a little bit of, if you can hear that ice jingling. I, I got hear a it. I hear it. Cup here. Got some Crown Royal. It's Thirsty Thursday. But more importantly, it's Cowboys Cave Thursday. And, you know, we got another great guest coming oh, yeah. into the cave. I'm excited about it. the OG of YouTube when it comes to Cowboys. I mean, this man has a huge following, well-respected. I've had the pleasure of meeting him, actually being on one of his shows. We kind of did a – there was a live draft thing. They invited me to it. I was able to be there with him. Really, really great guest coming up here. So, without further ado, let's bring him in, Mark Mark Holmes. No, let's let's get him in. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, Mark, but I enjoy your content. Oh, I love thank you. you. How you doing tonight, brother? How's I'm it going? I'm doing great, man. I've been watching you guys, man. I love it. Uh, you know, I love the energy that you have, Mike. You know, I thought that uh, you were my age and stuff, but you seem to have a lot more energy than I do, man, when you're going in there getting ready on game day and stuff. And I realized what OG, now some people say original gangster. I yeah. know what it really means, old guy. I, I got it. I'm, I'm good with that, though. Well, we, we love having you. I've been a fan, but really, I have never had the chance or opportunity to talk to you. We haven't been able to, you know, see you at a game. Hopefully, that that'll change this season. But but really, what is your, you know, where are you at the Cowboys history? I know you've got oh, great man. content creator and all that kind of great stuff you do. But what's your what's your story with the Cowboys? Let me. I want to hear some history. Well, he, here's the thing. You know, um, a lot of people will be surprised to find out that I am not from Dallas. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are going to say, you know, you're not a real Cowboy fan because you're not from Dallas. But as a kid <clears throat> growing up, I lived, you know, in Northern Virginia, about um, 15 miles from where RFK Stadium is. And my dad was a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. As a little kid, I idolized my dad. I didn't even know what football was. All I knew was I'm sitting on the couch looking at my dad, and he's screaming, go Cowboys. And that's been since the 60s. So <clears throat> I grew up being that Cowboy fan, and it was hard. For everybody out there that thinks that, you know, if you're not from Dallas being a Cowboy fan, you're not a real one, trust me. I went to high school with Richie Pettibone's kids. <laughs> Joe Gibbs' son was the Crosstown Rivals quarterback. And my brother even ran into Dyron Talbert's wife's car. So I literally am all around all of these Washington Redskins players, family members and stuff. And this is during the 80s when they were winning Super Bowls. So it was no fun for me being a Cowboy fan back then. So, you know, I'm still here kind of sticking a knife in the back of uh, Washington fans and things like that, although it's hard to find a Washington fan around here anymore. Yeah, I am born and raised, people know, born and raised in South Florida. So mm -hmm. I am like you, but I bleed silver and blue. I've been Cowboys fan my whole life, and I'm from the 80s. You know, mm -hmm. born in 75, but I, I'm the 80s generation when the Cowboys are kind of starting to go downhill. And yeah. I was the same. Got laughed at at school. Used to wear my Cowboys jacket and people <laughs> make fun of me. The Dolphins were – never got to the Super Bowl, but they were always better than the Cowboys. And then we finally get to the Super Bowl, and yeah. I see every son of a – you know what, wearing Cowboys stuff all of a sudden used to piss the shit out of me, and so I quit wearing it in school. But anyway, that's it's it's a cool story. And, and Talbert, he hated – the Dallas Cowboys. Let me just tell you, I've uh, yeah. my brothers talked to him and he despised the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Really hated Roger Staubach. 
So. Well, you know, see, that's the thing that a lot of people, you know, we're older, so you you saw a lot of it. If you saw football back in the 70s and the early 80s where it was, there was no free agency. When you were a cowboy, you were a cowboy for life. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, we're going to go work out with Washington players in the offseason, we're buddies and everything else. They literally hated each other. And the atmosphere of Washington Cowboys week, it was the buildup was just as big as the game. And these guys were literally fighting like it was for their lives. Not like what you see today. You know, when I see like what I did in the playoff game there against Green Bay where guys are kind of checking out. No, you, that didn't happen back in the day. This no. was your life. I mean, it wasn't that you're getting paid millions of dollars and you're okay. This was everything when they played. And it's kind of sad to see how it's gone through. I, I understand, you know, having been a, uh, in special teams a lot and getting plenty of concussions and stuff, I get it that they're trying to keep the players safe and things like that. But the passion that it used to be there is just not there in the same way. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's why uh, I, I interview and Kelly and I try and get a lot of the old guys on because it's just a different – attitude you know mm -hmm. we had like kevin gogan on and and he was like you know when we lost i'm not staying on the effing field man i want my ass out of here now these guys right. are sitting here enjoying the celebration doing jersey swaps it was just a different mindset right kelly yeah. i mean it's just mm -hmm. different mindset. well and you know i was gonna say you know not only that but i mean we're seeing it whether we whether we recognize it or not you know a lot of times you know if you're if you start, let's just say, for example, you start putting on weight, you don't really notice it until you look back a picture at your skinny yourself and you're like, damn, we put on some weight. The physicality of football is also going by the wayside, right? I mean, it it used to be like you watch some of the old highlights, man, and, and some of the hits. I was always a defense. I love defense because I love watching the hard hits. You mm -hmm. don't you don't really see those anymore. Oh. I mean, yeah, there's still some hard hitting, but it's not like it was in the 90s. And that's not just the old, you know, that's not just a guy in his 40s trying to relive the old days. It's true. And I mean, you look at it now. There, how many tackles, how many hits have they banned? You can barely even lay a finger on the quarterback. I'm telling you right now, Troy Aikman would love playing in this mm -hmm. new era of football because that mm -hmm. man got killed in the 90s killed in the 90s when dudes would just lighten him up and i think that's a lot of it too you know you're you're seeing a lot less physicality and i don't know that's what drew me to football in the first place is that it's a physical it's a sometimes well most of the time a violent sport and i think yeah. that's what as as a young testosterone filled teenager mm -hmm. i loved about the sport and yeah. i mean i just feel like man i i keep saying this they're 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 nba in my nfl <laughs> They're taking away the physicality. <laughs> Defense is out the window. They want to see 40-point games on regular. Um, you know, long gone are the days of the Cowboys winning against the Eagles 16-13. You know, yeah. you don't see those kinds of games anymore, and it's mm -hmm. rare. And I don't know, man. It's just changed the things. I still love the sport, but it's definitely changed since we first fell in love with the game. All right, now we're going to be a bunch of boomers, so we'll get into it. But, hey, I just want to appreciate everyone in the chat. I'm seeing a bunch of people. I want to make it very clear because I, I don't know if there's a hater in here or not, but <laughs> I asked uh, Mark if he could share our video. He, he's a great Cowboys content creator. He's someone that we all look up to. So I don't know what the comment, the, the BS that, 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 you, that you're saying in there. I don't even look at your name. But we asked him to share it. It's an honor that he would share our content on his channel. So, Mark, I appreciate it. I want You're to make sure. You're very welcome. And welcome. with that being said, everybody that's in here, in the description right there up top, I've got the link for Cowboys Cave. Check out my tag. Check out K9 Kelly, too. Uh, sub up. Give him some love and stuff. You may or may not like me or something, which is cool. But there's so many different content creators that are out there that are all putting in the work and stuff to bring you the best news on the Cowboys. And let the haters hate. You know, yeah. that's, that's what they do. Because, you know, haters don't realize it, but they actually help your channel to grow because the algorithm doesn't care if they like you or hate you. They only care that you're watching you. Well, and that was a funny thing. Kelly and I talked about it. I'm sure, you, you know, you get your share. But when I first did my video, it was kind of by accident. It was an old wrestling thing I used to do as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I used to always do it with my friends and then then did it for my kids for entertainment. So I did it one time and someone said, man, you need to post it on Twitter and tag at a tank jersey on to so tag him. And then I got so much love, but then I got so much hate. And in the early stages, I just would respond only to the hate. It would absolutely drive me insane because I, you know, I was just some dude. <laughs> doing this but now i've learned yeah. i just kind of moved past all that and 
and I appreciate the hate. There's, the, the haters watch more than the people who love you, really. So. This is true, yeah. It, and they get off when you, of course, mention their name. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm getting underneath their skin and stuff. Yeah. So I mean, I'm curious. I, I got to ask you guys a question here because, see, I have been going through all kinds of emotions with this off season, And, you know, at some points I keep thinking in my mind that this is the same as every year. You know, every year the Cowboys haven't done anything to improve themselves. They don't care about winning. They're not signing big name free agents. And then I start thinking about like when Von Miller signed with Buffalo or Russell Wilson got traded to Denver, you know, and the Cowboys did, you know, we, we signed a long snapper and stuff and we end up being 12 and five. I know we've sucked in the playoffs and things, but, you know, as much as they keep anointing guys like Justin Herbert, what's that guy done? Yeah. Seriously, yeah. he's lost the yeah. back twice. You know, even Josh Allen, he had that one season they went to the AFC Championship game, but I thought it was all about the Super Bowl. So I look at it and say the only team that's not failing is Kansas City. Yeah. Well, I so, would say I would say my opinion of, of of the Cowboys right now. Obviously, and and I'd love to get your opinion on it when when we both respond to you. But that Packer game, playoff game, I will say it. I've said it a million times. Worst loss in, in Cowboys history. Mm -hmm. It may not have been because you know they may, might have had some worse beatings or something like that. But all the expectations of you're at home, you're undefeated, all this other stuff at home, and you go out and you just get your ass whooped. To me, it was just demoralizing, humiliating. I wanted everybody gone. I wanted blood. I mean, as a fan, and then you sit back, right? Then you just kind of like, all right, let's let's things settled in. I was hoping that they were going to maybe add some pieces, some dogs. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to sign big name guys. I was kind of hoping they'd have at a couple, you know, especially on defense, some, some right. dogs. They didn't really do that. I mean, Kendricks, I think, is, is a good signing. But to your point is everyone is upset about who they lost. I let them go. I mean, I, I mean, they didn't win with them. So I have no issues with what they're doing. And it's just like last year. If you remember, everyone was all bent out of shape. And then they trade for Cooks. They, they mm -hmm. trade for Stefan. And everyone's loving the Cowboys off season. So I always, like I tell my son, it's, it's April, man. Let's just chill. Let the draft mm -hmm. go. Let free agency go. Then just start going crazy. I don't know. Kelly, what do you think? Yeah, I feel, you know, I think the reason that, that this season, I feel like feels more frustrating to Cowboys fans is just because uh, like we were talking before we came on the show that this Cowboys cycle is almost like Groundhog's Day. <laughs> it, we're starting to get tired of it, right? It's like we're 12 and five and we're, it's like, we feel we're close, but yet we feel like we're, you know, we're, we're so far away. It's like you're, you're standing at the red rope to get into this really cool event that you've been waiting all day for. And, and we're close, but we keep getting, we keep getting booted out by that bouncer. He's like back mm -hmm. of the line, chomp back of the line. And we felt like, is at least I did. I felt like that we were very close that if we would just make a few moves, I felt like we're one or two pieces from grabbing some of these premium free agents, right? Grab one of these guys that could really help put this team over the hump and, and make us get better. And I think last year, what we saw was for me anyway, was at least they did something in terms of we were a little weak at DB. They added Gilmore by trade. We had a problem mm -hmm. at the wide receiver depth and they added cooks, right? This year, we had the weakness at the running back, glaring, and then the linebacker. Now they did add Kendricks. I do like what they they did there. But the running back thing, we saw all these you know these big name running backs, not even the big name ones, but guys that I felt that could have been productive, going for very reasonable prices. It wasn't yeah. like these dudes were getting signed to contracts where it right. was like, yeah, we couldn't have afforded him, or or that's way out of our ballpark. I wouldn't want to pay a running back that kind of money. I thought they all got reasonable contracts. And the fact the Cowboys didn't do anything uh, was discouraging, along with the fact that I'm not I'm not 100 percent against Mike Zimmer. I think he'll I think he'll be good. But the fact that we also you knew Quinn wasn't coming back and it was a inexcusable performance in the in the playoff game against Green Bay. Why mm -hmm. not fire him the day after and, and set yourself up to go get maybe one of these, you know, higher end defensive coordinators, these guys that have these, you know, maybe some up and comers versus what the Cowboys tend to do and going to grab a guy with head coaching experience and, and all of this. Now I'm not saying mm -hmm. that it's going to work out bad for him, but it's just, it seems like it's the same kind of thing with the Cowboys. These are the same moves we see. They, they're not willing to take a chance. You know, you, you, Jerry Jones is, is saying he's all in, but yet 
you know, he's pushing just a couple of chips in. You know, when you're all in, you push your chips into the table. You do what the, the Rams did that year that their owner's talking about, F them draft picks. And he's going out and he's getting everybody he can get because he knows he's got a veteran quarterback and that's what you need to win. Have you a quarterback to win some games, then put the talent around him, build in the trenches and get some elite players and then pay for it later. And, and people said that the, that was the wrong way to do it. Well, the Rams were back in the playoffs last year after winning the Super Bowl just a yeah. few years ago. You can do these things, and we as fans are smart enough to see other teams do it and wonder why the hell we're not doing the same thing, and that's what's frustrating. Yeah. Well, it definitely hurts when you're sitting there looking at Houston, you know, making moves left and right. You know, it, it, in, in my mind, it's not so much like the Stefan Diggs trade. You know, that I don't have a problem with spending capital, draft capital, or money. That's one of those ones that's going to cost money and draft cap capital. And it's a guy that's older and that could blow up in your face. But it's just that, you know, the Cowboys, I think they do so many things well. They are better than anybody else with undrafted rookie free agents. They are better than most teams are drafting. And they, I think they're almost getting high on their own supply and believing yeah. we don't need to mess with these free agents. You know, we're good at getting these young guys in here and so on. We'll, you know, and, and when we draft well and we pay our guys, sometimes it's better off not to pay them and let them go. Get that comp pick and not pay those big salaries. You know, I love Zeke. Oh, my God, I love Zeke. But you don't pay a running back after four years. Four years, their numbers start going down. $90 yeah. million. Jalen Smith, you knew he had dropped foot and mm. you paid him early. Michael Gallup, I still don't see the reason behind the urgency to sign him to that deal because he went from 1,100 yards to 800 yards to 480. And then you sign him to a $50 million deal when he tore his ACL. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Let, you know, get him a prove it year. One year, see if he's healed up. Nobody's going to be in a rush to sign him, and you let Cedric Wilson go who's healthy. That's where you kind of say, what are these moves? You know, when people go through and say, oh, we're in financial hell, you know, if Dak wasn't here, then we would be spending all kinds of – no, they wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't. That, that's no, they not wouldn't. their MO. You know, uh, it was funny because I was talking to Law just before free agency started. I said, do you think that this year is going to be the year that we go through and actually – uh, do some things of free agency. He said, Hey, he said, you know how to barbecue? I said, yeah, I know how to barbecue. I said, I smoked my meat for like 15 hours, my pork shoulders and this, that, and the other. He said, are you going to change how you do it? Cause he said, it comes out good. Right. I said, yeah. He said, are you going to change how you do it? I said, no. He said, that's the Joneses. They look at it and they say, you know what? All these teams are out here grabbing all these free agents and we end up with a better record at the end of the year. Stephen Jones said it, you know, we won 36 games in the last three years. We're right there, you know, and that's their philosophy. They're not going to change it no matter how pissed off we get. It's just now, the way it is. Now, and, and it's, you know, they're always, they've always been loyal to their guys. And they always say that and they're going to, they always re-sign their guys. And it's, you know, they've made a lot of mistakes with it. It's burned them. And it's, and it, it, the thing I don't like, let me just give some quick love to my man cuts by Jones with the super chat Anyone, man, you guys know that that he's our guy. He's, he's one of our sponsors. He does beautiful cuts, man. So not only does he do that, he's a great griller. So he comes out to the Cowboys Cape tailgate party. Hopefully, markets went at a game you're at because we'll have a good Shit. time. Man. I could use a cut right now, man. My hair is getting kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could do that. I don't know if you want him to give you that kind of cut. Oh but, shit! But, but, but he will do it. The thing, but but going back to it, the thing that frustrates me with with the Cowboys is the pressure that they now put on their draft and mm -hmm. they've got to hit triples and home runs. Everyone said, well, they got to get three or four starters out of this draft. They've got to get, they, they can't have any misses. And if you do get misses and I mean, some we'll see next year, but last year's draft, I mean, overshone got hurt. So, I mean, let's yeah. see how he comes back. Schoonmaker that didn't, that's turning out to be, you know, so far, not so good. Mozzie had some issues now his shoulder surgery. So maybe he comes back, but you saw the impact that that had when you did not strike mm -hmm. gold with the draft. And now they're going to put this pressure on again. And that's why I didn't understand draft a running back, go get Trey Benson, go get one of these young running backs. But man, you had some veterans just sitting out there that you could have got for peanuts and they just didn't do it. They're so headstrong yeah. on their guys their way and it's been 30 years and it's just almost 30 years i know someone will correct me if i say 30 years it's almost 30 years but it's like 
change it up a little bit, man. I know you're not going to go big splash in free agency, but man, do yeah. something. Well, I, you know, something that I, something that I saw that that came up today, and I screenshot it. I had to, I had to look for it, and I, I wish I it didn't capture the guy, so I can't give him credit for whose it was. So I do apologize, but um, he says, you know, Mark said something that struck stuck with me, and he's talking about, you know, even if you know we had a you know Dak under a cheaper contract, rookie kind, whatever, we wouldn't spend this kind of money. So this dude showed something in 2018. 2018 was the year they traded for Amari Cooper, and they did that midway into October, right? Mm -hmm. At the beginning of that year, 2018, Dak Prescott's salary cap hit was $725,000, right? Mm -hmm. Their wide receivers that they had to st on starting opening day was Michael Gallup, mm -hmm. Alan Hearns, mm -hmm. Cole Beasley, Terrence Williams, Deontay Thompson, and Tavon Austin. Yep. I mean, you, you look at Houston and, and it's, <laughs> And you know, and of course, we ended up trading for Cooper. But again, that was that was into October when the Cowboys were like, you know what, we need to do something because we're five. in trouble right now. There's no legit. You look at Houston and what they're doing. Like Mark said, they're you know they're bringing it, dude. They've literally got three receivers on that roster right there that are that are dogs. All three of those dudes are potential to go over a thousand yards, and but they're they're going about it the right way, and even. When the Joneses had Dak under that rookie contract, they still didn't go out and put and grab big time free agents and put this elite talent around him. Mm -hmm. They always kind of did what you know what Mark said. It's they they want to do things on the cheap and they want to, you know, the draft, which they've drafted well as of late. I thought last year is still to be determined, but last year obviously was not great. Um, but you know, you look at you look at this Cowboys team over the over the history, it's just like what do you what are they saving that money for? They always tell us that they're saving it for something. First, there was the Jerry Jones talking about the pie. There's only so much of the pie. Mm -hmm. Now they're talking about 2025. We've got you know guys to sign in 2025. Like no other team in the NFL is doing that. They're literally going out and they're saying free agency starts. 31 other teams make moves. One team stays stagnant, and it's the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm over here like pounding my head, like, what in the hell? is going on with the Cowboys. I, I you just, know what the bottom line is? Is, you know, if they were just hire somebody who understood contracts and the cap, because there's no way you can tell me that every year New Orleans starts out like $73 million in the hole. Yep. Mm -hmm. Somehow by the time the season starts here, you know, the, the league year starts, they've always got $20 million more than we do. They go out and they sign people. You look at how the Eagles have gone through. They ate $34 million dead hit for Carson Wentz one year. Yeah. They've already gotten Jalen Hurts paid $51 million a year versus yeah. Dak Prescott at 40. Now think about that for a second. He's making $11 million more a year, and they're sitting here today with $25 million more than we do in salary cap after all the moves they've made. Yeah, and just okay. re-signed alignment, so, right? Didn't they just extend alignment? Thirty. Yeah, million, exactly. Like so yeah. you sit here and you look at this and say, we've lost players. We have signed two of our, three of our own guys and brought in Eric Kendricks, and we still have less money than them. So yeah. it's like there's something you're not doing right with the money, okay? The, there's no way in the world that you can look and say, you know, we don't have any money, but 31 other teams do. You yeah. are 20th, I think, in dead money this season, and I think dead last in money spent in free agency. How is it you're broke? Yeah. No, they ain't broke. I might they 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 raised my season ticket prices. They didn't mind doing that without letting me know. And then they they did the uh, convenient thing with your seat license. You had to pay it the day before, day or two before free agency oh. started. You had to pay your seat license. I mean, they're oh, smart geez. business guys. I mean, I got to give it to them. Get you hooked before you get pissed is what it is. Oh, man. They, they, they don't want to play on emotion. So let me ask you, because Dak is a hot topic, and I know you know you have some some feelings on Dak, strong feelings. And and um, what, I mean, what is your, you know, observation? Dak, you know, his career so far and, and moving forward with the Cowboys. You know, here's what I would love to see. See, the Texans – as much as you got Eastside Harold in a shout out to Eastside, he's going to probably start trolling you now. Uh, I don't know if some of the people that are subbing up to your channel now that you necessarily want or not. <laughs> but could you imagine if 
the Cowboys did what the Texans are doing right now. They look at it and they say, we got C.J. Stroud. He's a good young quarterback. Let's put people around him. Look at what the Eagles did with Jalen Hurts because they were like, we're not sure if he's going to be good or not, but let's do everything we can to support him. You know, I keep hearing so many people that hate Dak. You know, either you, you love Dak or you hate Dak. But they'll say Dak Prescott can't elevate a team to win a Super Bowl. Okay. I, I hear what you're saying. I don't know that there's anybody that actually goes out there without a semblance of a team to win it. If you're saying he's got limitations, why don't you go ahead and do something to support those limitations? Why is it we're always going, we're going to do more with less? Yeah. In the past few years, Amari Cooper, one of the best route runners in football, you got rid of him. You ended up bringing in, um, God, uh, James Washington? Yep, James Washington. You signed yep. James Washington. Yeah. We had Noah Brown. And you signed back Michael Gallup, and you also let your number three receiver go. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So in my mind, you you got worse as far as talent around your quarterback. And we didn't really have a tight end. Jason Witten had finally aged out and we were just kind of like throwing, you know, we yeah, had yeah, Schultz, Schultz, but, just you know, but like Schultz, had, it, I mean, Schultz had good numbers, but Schultz had a lot of drops and Schultz was not that guy that's going to make big plays. You know, no. Jake Ferguson, I look at him and I say he might become a really, really good tight end. You see a lot yeah. of promise and that's a position that takes time to grow. So then you look at it and say, okay, Zeke Elliott is kind of going downhill. I, I, you know, I agree with letting him go. He was too expensive. But then you don't replace him. You look and say, okay, Tony, you're going to be Zeke and Jew. And he had a hard time staying healthy when he was running 10, 12, 15 plays. One of the games when the year before Zeke was out, he had to have like 25 carries. He was sucking oxygen and talking about, I had, you know, he's just worn out. So how do you think now he is going to be able to be your full-time back? Yeah. You know, and Tyron Smith, you know, it's it's almost comical now how everybody's pissed off because we let Tyron Smith go. But the reality is Tyron Smith has averaged seven and a half games a season for the last four years. Yeah. You know, people were mad that we let Zeke go. But it's like Zeke has been averaging like 3.8, 3.7 yards a carry. His play has been going downhill and doesn't justify $16 million a year. I understand the move, but you got to replace that. When you get rid of people, you've got to replace it. I often wonder, what would this offense be like if we did something like the Eagles did and really bring in more people and try and really build it up, take care of the offensive line instead of saying, you know, we can bring in Jason Peters and we'll be fine. Yeah. No, I, I and I said in the beginning, uh, there's uh, there's some some love from Houston. That I said um, all season last season, the running game is going to bite them in the ass. Tony Pollard was not a number one running back. It's a two back league that had nothing mm -hmm. really behind him. Pollard really could. It, it reminded me a lot of Felix Jones. I kept comparing it to like the Felix Jones. Felix Jones yeah. was dynamite at that two. Then they made him the one, and his, his career never was the same. Mm -hmm. so we'll see what happens, you know, to Pollard. But that you know, you got to have a running game as good as Mahomes is, and Mahomes is the best. You know, there's Mahomes and everyone else, not even close. Yeah. But you know, Pacheco kind of got you know he got going, and that offense gets going. You got to have a running game. I know it's a passing league, but you got to be able to run the football. And you know, at that Miami game, I always go back, man. You had that secondary, that cornerback taking Pollard down with oh. one arm at the goal line. It's like Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just can't work. So that's what worries me about going into this year is they did nothing to address the running game. They better draft a running game, running back, but now that running back better be a stud because there's going to be a lot of pressure on him to yeah. perform. Well, th this is very true that you definitely need a good running back to go with it. Although, you know, a running back can be better depending on how your offensive line is. So, you know, going into the draft, you've got both of those holes that you really want to have an upgrade. But in some regard, I think we're actually fortunate because of Tyler Smith. You know, the Cowboys love to draft the number in the first round. They like to get the highest prospect out of position, right? Yep. You know, you can see that with, of course, Zeke. Of course, he was the best running back. You know, Micah was truly one of the best edge rushers. Or even when they moved back and they drafted Travis Frederick, people laughed at him because they took a center. You're taking a center in the first round, but he ended up being, you know, a great one. Same thing uh, typically is what they like to do. So drafting at 24, 
you look at that and say, your left tackles are probably going to be gone. You're probably going to have two or three of those guys already drafted out of there. So guard and center are more likely that you'll be able to get that number one prospect. And, you know, you can kind of play around with Tyler Smith to play left tackle. I'd rather keep him at guard, but if you can't get a great left tackle, you got to protect Dax blind side. Yeah. And you have the potential, I think, actually – to be a little bit better. And I think they really believe in Brock Hoffman that Brock Hoffman won't be a drop um, from Biotis that much. You know, there's a lot of times the Cowboys will have some players that are back there that we don't really know that much about that come out of nowhere that end up being legitimate starters. And I think that's what they feel with the team right now. The one thing that I will say gives me hope was actually listening to Jerry, which is crazy in itself to even say this. But when sailor. Jerry was asked about Cowboys culture, do you have a culture problem? And what he said was, if running the football and stopping the run is culture, then yes, we have a culture problem. And so as you look and you see the players that have been not resigned, when you look at it and say that, you know, we've got um, Dante Fowler. Well, I think Goldston is as good as he is. When you look at Dorrance Armstrong, Two years ago, when we re-signed him and let Randy Gregory go, you know, and Stephen Jones said, you know, he's right there in production, just like Randy Gregory. I think Sam Williams should be able to step into that role. He has had eight and a half sacks in his two years on limited playing time. He's got the physical tools. He needs somebody to teach him and to not make the Randy Gregory penalty mistakes. But I think that's a guy that can step up. If those things happen, then you're not in as bad a shape as you think, because I honestly think that with Kendricks there, if Overshone becomes healthy and Damone Clark doesn't have to be the guy, your linebacking core is probably better than it's been in quite a while. Mm -hmm. And if you can get yourself some decent defensive linemen, and I'm not ready to give up on Mozzie just yet. You know, you, when you're a rookie, your eyes are wide open. Dan Quinn decided we want to make you a three technique. We want you to lose 40 pounds. And that can really mess you up because, you know, most people will think that, you know, your defensive lineman, it's the same thing. There's a big difference of playing as a tackle where the guy is a little more than a yard away from you versus being a one technique where you've got the center and your contact point is me just reaching out and touching you. And so I think that he may end up being a little bit better than we think. And uh, Vioko is another one to watch as well. So we have some players that are on this team. We've got all the doom and gloom. We're only going to win four games next year. No, this is still going to be a good team. Is it going to be good enough to win the Super Bowl? Uh, unless the Cowboys make some extra moves to make sure they've got enough talent to get over it. I don't know about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, the, the draft being just, you know, just, well, it's this month. Three so weeks. Only, only a Three couple weeks, weeks from away. tonight. <laughs> yeah, a couple weeks away. And obviously, you know, you talked about, you know, D-tackle, and we've talked about kind of free agency and the lack of what they've done. So let me let me just ask you real quick, two, two quick questions on this, on the draft. One, first round, you got your, you know, you got your pick of the positions that they go after, right? Do you have anybody in mind that sticks out or do you have a favorite that you're looking at? Me personally, I'm looking at these defensive tackles. I kind of like that Murphy from Texas. If he was the fall of the Cowboys, that pick, mm -hmm. I really love them. DT or offensive line, I feel like kind of building the trenches and being solid in the trenches is something that, that can benefit the Cowboys. And then two, are you in favor of, you know, of the Cowboys trying to do some trading back to acquire more picks? Because obviously they're short a couple picks from what they gave up last year to get Gilmore and Cooks. I know we mm -hmm. got some comp picks coming, but um, that are going to be factored in there too. But are you a fan yeah. of doing any trading back or are you just kind of like, you know, play the board and let it, let it fall? Well, here's the problem. with The biggest problem I have with the Cowboys, the Cowboys always seem to do their homework and do great in the first round. It's that second round where it's they're always trying to get first round talent, you know, from the scratch and dent pile, and very rarely has it worked out for them. You know, when we look at second round picks, you know, you can look and you can see the the highway littered with them. You can look and say that Diggs and D Law since about 2012, that's the list. Mm -hmm. You put Sean Lee on there as well. Those were really the only second round picks that have done well. Now we do have time still with Sam Williams and with Schoonmaker. Hopefully that they're not the 
you know, some of the ones that we've had. And we've had some really bad ones um, there. So first thing, I hope the Cowboys don't draft anybody who's been injured or off the field issues because it just has not worked out for us. We have had better luck trading back when we traded back for Travis Frederick. And we ended up getting, um, uh, shit, wide receiver um, uh, in the third round. I'm trying to remember. Um, Terrence Williams. Terrence Williams. But, yeah, yeah. So basically, you got a free player. And the same yeah. thing with when we moved back with Micah Parsons, we ended up getting Goldston. And Goldston, I think, he just needs some more playing time on there. He's actually really good um, as well. For me, the Cowboys have been lights out with uh, offensive linemen. Everybody that they've drafted in the first round has been a pro bowler and been a game changer. And I would love to see them go with the offensive line. Um, the offensive tackle from Oregon um, will probably be gone by the time we get there. Uh, I would love to be able to see him, see them get him. Um, in the second round, I would love to see them, if possible, get Trey Benson. And maybe this is a case where if they move back, that maybe they get their offensive tackle and they can move up to get Trey Benson. Cause I'm not sure Trey Benson will make it there to 54. You don't uh, think, you don't think Trey will get to the third round? Cause I've seen a know, lot of box, but where he's going. Cause I, I like him. There was a question about him or, or, or Brooks and, and Brooks is one of those guys, like you said, is he's a little injured, but he's young. But I'm with you. I, I don't, I can't, I don't want to take chances. I need solid guys. I like Benson. Yeah. From FSU. I, I, I love that. I would love to have Benson here. Um, see, here's the problem is the pendulum swings. Sometimes it swings too far. I think last year there was so much about running backs that, you know, you don't want to pay running backs. Running backs were literally passe. People were telling, telling their kids, don't become a running back. You're not going to get paid and you're just going to get abused. And I think it swung a little too far. And I think teams are realizing how important it is on that running game as well. Now, the problem is, and I think the Eagles might have this problem with um, their running game is, when you have a bellwether back that is taking all that abuse all season long, by the time you get to the playoffs, they've got dead legs. If you look back at our playoff losses by the time we've gotten to play San Francisco and everything else, um, Zeke and Tony Pollard have been just kind of not there. Zeke has had a, a PCL injury one year and a hyperextended knee that by the time he gets to the playoffs, we're getting 25, 30 yards from him. That's not enough when it comes to playoff time. If you look at what Troy Aikman had with Emmett Smith in the playoffs, oh, shit, it's night and day difference. And we need to be in that kind of position. So this is where having the multiple backs, and I have no problem bringing Zeke back if you're drafting another back to go with him. Yeah, yeah. We're looking and saying Zeke's gonna be our running back. We're fine. Hell no. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Yeah. They they they've got to they they got to they got to hit the running back. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm just an old school football guy that loves running backs, and I just think that it's so important, and you see it in this game, mm -hmm. and it, they've just got to do something. So, looking at the draft, you know. There, there was a comment, you know, about offensive linemen, you know, offensive linemen, first round picks. And I don't have all the numbers, so I'm not going to say it's true or not. But Ultra's usually, yeah, he's pretty good with this stuff. His offensive mm -hmm. linemen, first round picks aren't usually in the Super Bowl. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I thought I remembered a chief guy, Fisher, or something in the Super Bowl, but okay. maybe, I'm wrong. maybe I'm wrong. But well, we the game is one of the trenches. I, to me, it's offensive defensive line. You got to be strong. Mm -hmm. You got to be strong up the gut. And I think that's where the Cowboys have had a problem. So to Kelly, I'm like, yeah, defensive tackle, I wouldn't mind if the Cowboys, I know Mozzie, they, they drafted him last year, but I just don't know if you can have enough of those guys. Mm -hmm. Uh Middle linebacker Kendricks, I think, is going to do a solid job. How do you feel about the safeties? How do you feel about our safeties that we got coming back? You know, actually, my whole back end, here's the way I look at it. Now, see, like I said, everybody's got the doom and gloom. The Cowboys suck and everything else. Our problem was we just could not stop the run. And, see, people don't seem to understand. See, the key to everything <clears throat> on your defense, unfortunately, is a guy that nobody will know. And that is the interior defensive lineman. I always say that your biggest bang for the buck becomes that interior defensive lineman. You see what Chris Jones did for uh, that defense at Kansas City. If you have somebody in there who can shut down the middle and requires double teams, you're going to see Micah Parsons feasting. <clears throat> if that guy can hold the middle of the field <clears throat> and push a little bit up, 
it's going to make it easier on the back end. Your linebackers, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Hold on, let me on. grab some water real quick. I'll be right okay. back. <clears throat> Go ahead. But, um, you know, I, 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 what what is your thoughts on safety while he's while he's getting – I mean, you know, I, I don't feel I don't feel like it's the worst that it's been. I mean, I think that, you know, we've got some we've got some guys back there. Not not only that, I'll be curious to kind of see what they do with with Bell. I mean, yeah. he's still on the team. I don't think he's going to stay in that linebacker position. So does he get some time, more time at the safety position? You know what I mean? Because that's kind of like his natural. Mm. That's where he's built to play right so yeah you know anxious to see what where what they do with bell because he's a guy that i think has the potential to be really good there i, I think he was just you know he excelled at that linebacker position for a while but in the end that's a physical position he just didn't have the body built to be big enough but yeah. i'm gonna let mark take i'm gonna let mark yeah. take his back i, I should have gotten some of that crown royal that you had and i probably <laughs> wouldn't have been choking over here <clears throat> but see the key will be is if that defensive line can keep that offensive line taken care of. Your linebackers can scrape unmolested. They can see the whole field. And by the linebackers being able to do that, it then turns around and translates to make everybody else's job easier on the back end. Like you were saying, Marquez Bell, I love him. He's great. He is a great run support guy. <clears throat> but putting him in there at linebacker at about 207 pounds is just too small. Yeah. And teams knew that. You know, as much as everybody wants to look and just say, we failed. You know, when you get to the playoffs, you got to be able to run the football. I yeah. don't care if you got Pat Mahomes. Pacheco was a difference maker for that team. And you got to be able to stop the run. You look what Kansas City did to Baltimore. They got the three takeaways. They, they basically shut down their running game. That is the difference there. We could not stop the run. And that went out through the whole season. Every time we played a run-heavy team, they ran rough shot over us. So it was like an issue that we had going on. And if there's anything that really irks me is where Stephen Jones is always, we believe in our guys. Well, that works to a point. But at some point, when you're down to a 207-pound linebacker, you got to do something. You've got to do more than that and say, we're going to be good with that. And you can look from the Cowboys. You know, we knew we had a problem running back. You could have made a deal for Derrick Henry during the season and said, you know what, we're going to try and salvage just like we did with Amari Cooper. Yep. They just won't do those moves. It's just like we're good enough. You're not good enough. Yeah. You don't have any margin for error because you are so low with the amount of talent you have. You lose a key player here and there, you're screwed. No, no, it's true. And I got to, hey, I want to give a quick shout out. My man Malik Rozier, he hopped in into the chat. Miami Hurricane quarterback. You know, he, he was part of one of those really good teams in Miami. That of course, they beat FSU, so I was happy. Mm -hmm. Him and I were, were talking a couple of weeks ago, and he's saying draft a quarterback. And I just uh, – I just we're going to talk about it Tuesday. He's going to be on our show. But, I mean, that to me sends a, a, a bad message, but he likes Penix. Um, what would you do, either one of you guys, if, if, uh, if the Cowboys drafted a quarterback in the first round? <laughs> you know, let me let, can I let me back up here for a second, okay? Because everybody's been talking about the Cowboys should draft uh, Michael Penix. Is that yeah? Yeah, that was one of the names, right? right? That you know, oh, the Cowboys. He could no, but here's what's funny is I'm kind of like, what happened with Trey Lance? Yeah, that's my thing. Is well, yeah. wait a minute. I thought three weeks ago everybody's like it's Trey Lance's error. You can't draft a quarterback in the first round because then that's admitting that you screwed up with making the move for Trey Lance. Yeah. You don't give up a fourth-round pick, then pay him $5 million, and then turn around and draft a quarterback. I w That's when you have to say, I'm sorry, I, I got to give up with the team because now you're just stupid. Okay? <laughs> you're already spending more money on quarterback than any team in football, <laughs> and now you're going to draft another one? I mean, are, are, are you smoking crack? <laughs> I would have a heart attack. I, honestly, if they did that, I would unless they did something like they had some trade worked out or – Something like that. I would absolutely. Uh, I, it I would, would have to be one of the best quarterbacks there. Fell for whatever reason all yeah. the way there, where you look and say, "I, I can't pass this up." There's no way that. But, there's but, something, but that would be a cowboy thing to do. But there's something, not maybe not this year, but is there something to 
you know, uh, Mark and Kelly, we've both been around the block on this Cowboy team. They haven't drafted a, a, a first round quarterback since Aikman. They mm -hmm. really haven't drafted any quarterbacks, you know, at all. I mean, really, you, you look at, you, you know, Dak, obviously, in the fourth round, that was a good one. But Tony Romo was undrafted. They had a bunch of baseball guys that they were trying to turn quarterbacks. You see what Green Bay did with, with Rodgers when mm -hmm. Favre was there. You know, Jordan Love obviously had a good year. We'll see what happens. But you see some of these other teams draft quarterbacks. The, uh, New England did it with uh, with uh, Garoppolo. And I think there was another guy I can't remember that they had when when Brady was there. Is there something to maybe drafting a quarterback? Maybe not this year, but is is there something against the Cowboys drafting a quarterback early? With Ever? as many holes as we have, uh, you know, I, I know everybody will say you're just a Dak fan. You're not a Cowboy fan. Um, the reason I'm a fan of Dak Prescott is I believe right now he's the best option you have. Okay, I'm sorry. He's got more touchdown passes. I think he was third yardage uh, out there. Um, one of the least intercepted quarterbacks. I, I don't know that you're going to do better at that position. And I, if we had a loaded team, like say the Rams did, yeah. when they decided to get you know Matthew Stafford and bring him in here to win a Super Bowl, I'd say by all means do that. But we have so many needs. You, if you bring in, you know, I don't care if you say you know we're going to start Trey or we're going to draft another quarterback, you still have to address the problems that you have on the team. Of you need a better running game especially if you're going to have a young quarterback. You need to fix your offensive line. You can't lose two starting offensive line, including um, one future Hall of Famer, and say we're just going to put a young guy in there, we'll be fine, and we're going to be better. Yeah. So you have to fix those problems. And I think you're better off trying to fix those problems and hold on to this guy than you are saying, let's get another guy, and then we'll worry about the other problems. Yeah, yeah. Kelly, your thoughts? I was more like they've never done it. I mean, since 89 – they have not drafted Dak Prescott. You know, he's the one guy that, that they got, but I, I don't recall them ever drafting anybody. The one thing that gives you pause, though, is think about some of the guys that they really wanted. Oh, um, I know. Joe, I that last week. Connor Cook, now, Paxton last Lynch, week. right? And, now you, and, and then, you throw, then you trade for Trey Lance, and you pay more than any of the other quarterbacks that went out there. So yeah. you have to actually say – they kind of got lucky with Romo because yeah. Sean Payton got him in there. And Dak was literally like, oh, well, shit, uh, what's what's left? We, we need a camp body. Oh, there's a guy. Well, let's take him. And I'll be honest with you, the best thing that happened was Kellen Moore broke his ankle. Because if Kellen Moore had not broke his ankle when he did, that Dak wouldn't have gotten all the reps that he did going into that season. Yeah. It would have been Kellen Moore starting – first couple of games and Dak wouldn't have been getting those reps and who knows where he'd be right now. Um, Walker Wade says arch March Manning in three years. That's our future. <laughs> well, you're going to have to go down the toilet to get that guy. You're going to yeah. have to be really, really bad. That's the problem with it. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think the thing that some people are, are forgetting, like, you know, the ones that are saying that, you know, Hey, just move on from Dak and talking about, uh, you know, just let's start somebody else this year. Okay. That's, you know, that's if you're doing that, like there's people that are like, we should start Trey Lance this year. So you're you're going to, in essence, you're going to pay $55 million for Dak to be a backup. That makes zero sense mm -hmm. at all in any well, world. In any, you just don't do that. And not only that, the money they've moved now to the void years, you'll even pay him $40 million next year, even if he's not on the roster. Right. You're still, so you want to pay now, sit Dak this year and basically, in essence, pay $95 million for a quarterback that won't play it down for you. That's won you 12 games over the past three years. I get it. Lack of playoff yeah. success. What sense does that make, though? Well, the, 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 what, where it would make sense is if you are going to go ahead and say we are moving on from Dak, then holding on to him, Dak is going to come through. Here's what you can guarantee. Dak is going to come through, and he's going to play lights out. Because yeah. whether it's the Cowboys or somebody else, I'm going to get paid big time, especially if I play well. And if that's the case, he's going to keep you in more games. You'll probably win 10, 11, 12 games, be a playoff team. He can still probably ask for even more money. Maybe it's 65 next year instead of 60. <clears throat> if you're moving on from him, best thing is do it right now. Find out if Trey Lance is any good before you have to pay him more money. You're going to, you're going to start Dak all season and then Trey Lance is a free agent and say, oh, we got to pay him to stay when somebody might pay him to be a starter? 
Yeah. I mean, that was my thing with it is really, and I, I, I think Dak gives the team the best opportunity. I agree. And I mean, I've never been part of a franchise that has, I mean, you could argue whatever you want about Dak Prescott. He's a top seven. I mean, you can, I, mm-hmm. I don't think I dropped below seven quarterback and people want to want to get rid of them. So it kind of surprises me, but I understand the money thing in this. That My thing was, and, and I'll stay consistent with it. If you're going to, if, if they want to move on from Dak, then cut them, offer them, tell them, Hey, we're going to, we're, we're going to shop your benches. So if you want to try and work out a trade, I know you got a no trade clause. Mm-hmm. We can find you a team to go to or something. They should have done something like that, but to have him go in to basically a lame duck contract year, I don't know. I don't know what that's going to do. I just don't know how it's going to work out. And in the end, maybe what will happen, and it, maybe this is the best best case scenario, they win the Super Bowl. Dak gives them the finger and says, <laughs> you know what? I'm out of here. And yeah. Jerry's just looking at it. So it's just a weird situation with mm-hmm. Dak Prescott because it's so polarizing. I've never seen – anything like it i mean this was a say what you want runner up mvp and they'll say no playoff success but i don't hear that with with lamar jackson i didn't hear i don't really hear you know uh, so i don't know and he wasn't giving up all the rushing yards it's it's what i said before and and love to get your comments mark and 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 kelly too the deep the defense was to me overrated and i fell into the trap and, and and what I mean by that is when the offense jumped on on teams, the defense mm-hmm. pinned their ears back and do what they got to do. But the, if a team smacked us in the mouth and started running ruck shot on us and and started bullying us around, they they got their ass whooped. And then the the offense had to be on one hundred percent of the time. And I'll go to the Super Bowl. The Kansas City offense fluttered for three quarters, but that defense was good enough to keep it one score, keep it close until. Mm-hmm. Holmes got going. This defense can't do that. So you're putting all this pressure on the offense. They got to be 40 points every game or they're not going to win. And that's where I don't think it's well, fair, the criticism that Dak gets on that. He deserves some. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's all on him. Well, and I, what, I, what did I say? I mean, I've said this. I know I've said it multiple times because I remember I, I went and looked it up. Like this defense, like you said, played well against the bad teams. But when they played a team over 500, they gave up 32 points a game. That, yeah. So that defense was absolutely inflated in terms of what they did and the takeaways that they had. And, you know, and it's funny because, look, I mean, I I love, I do, and you're starting to hear a few, a little bit of rumblings about it, but I'm just saying, I love Michael Parsons. I think he is a great player. Mm-hmm. But when you look back at you, everybody wants to talk about Dak and the playoffs and all that. What impactful plays has Micah made in the playoffs? Like, I mean, I'm, just in, in big games, period, there's been a lot of times where Micah just – I don't, he leaves leaves a little something to be desired there for me. And then the defense in general, you know, like I said, 32 points a game, getting ran all over by Green Bay. Where is the ire for these the defensive players? Where's the ire for the defense? There's, there's none. It's all on Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. And, and that you know, Dak Prescott's never going to win a Super Bowl this, this but you know what? The Cowboys have been in this situation now for going on almost 30 years. That they yeah. We've seen this same cycle. We saw it with Romo. We mm-hmm. saw it with Dak. We have saw this team do this for many, many years, right? We, we even saw when we got to the playoffs with, with Quincy Carter in 2003, got smacked around by Carolina. Like, we've seen this team be good enough to get in the playoffs, but go one and done and get bounced in the first round. Like, we've seen yeah. this. It's not Dak. Dak ain't been the quarterback for 30 years. Yeah. Like, I mean, well, you know, the, it's, it's, the focus is always on the quarterback. It's always – Romo yeah. was called – he was called a choke artist. He couldn't get it done. Now Dak's a choke artist. He get like, how many quarterbacks do you have to run through that can win you and get you in a, posi- in a position to be in the playoffs, which is where you want to be as a team to just have a chance, even if, you know, even if we ain't done well, you want the chance. The point is to be there. That's the goal is to win a Super Bowl. First step, get to the playoffs. But, yeah, we're like – no, nope, throw it away. Let's start all over again. It's all Dak. It's all the quarterback. It's Dak is trash. He can, <clears throat> name me another quarterback that's won twelve. That's been on a team that's won twelve games three years in a row. It's not that easy to do. People talk mm-hmm. about it and just dismiss it. Like what Dak has done, the numbers he's put up is just that easy to do. So it's 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 a bigger scope than just the playoffs. And I understand the frustration because trust me, when they lost to Green Bay, <laughs> like I like I wanted everybody done. I was like Mike Orvin. They all got to go. Like, I mean, that was me. 
But then you look at it and you say, do you really want to move on from a quarterback that you know right now is the best quarterback in the NFC East? I'll yeah. stand I, on that. Yeah, without a doubt. Without but see, a doubt. here's the so, problem with that defense was, and I don't know if you want to blame Dan Quinn or with Dan Quinn saying that, you know, you got to have a sense of urgency that tomorrow's not promised. Because he ended up doing a lot with the players that we had. But if you looked at the, the type of players, he had lean guys that are tall and that are fast. They could get after the quarterback. You know, they could move up the field. But, you know, when you have defensive linemen that are 280 and you've got, you know, a 340-pound tackle and we're just putting our hand in the dirt, we're coming right at you. We did not have enough beef to be able to hold them back. And when you end up having a linebacker that's 207, you just don't have the physicality there to work with it. This is where I think that part of the thing was is letting the guys go that we did. We looked at it and said, well, we lost with you guys. We can lose without you. Yeah. And that you now have Mike Zimmer that's going to come in and he's going to want a different type, a different body type than what we had for Dan Quinn. And if you look at Dan Quinn, because when you think about Dan Quinn's defense when he was with Seattle, the linebackers were key. He yeah. had, you know, Cam Chancellor and those guys, Bobby Wagner's. He had lights out linebackers that he did not have with this defense that he had here. Now, I don't know if that was he just overlooked it and forgot that he needed the linebackers or if the Joneses were kind of hamstringing him on the amount of players that they would bring in. But I don't think that he forgot how to coach. I think he did a lot with what he had there. And I almost looked the same way with Mike McCarthy. You know, everybody wants to get rid of Mike McCarthy, but you look at the difference of Dak from the year before to this year with a new offense. Now, it was tweaked somewhat, but it's still a new offense. Take a look at what happened to the Eagles changing their coordinators, how they had a drop off. And when you think about him being in, Dak being in the system and now having uh, Brandon Cooks in the system with him a second year and uh, Jake Ferguson stepping up, the offense can be really, really dynamic if they do add that running back and get another offensive lineman. You might have that offense that can score 40 points a game. And hopefully we can get a couple of big guys in the middle to help out. I, I, I'm not I, – I'm pissed off that we are so close and that the Cowboys won't say, let's go out and get a little bit extra to make sure we got enough. That's the thing yeah. that drives you crazy. Cause you look yeah. and you say, we, we're good. At, we've got some really good players as good as anybody else. But when I look at what San Francisco has across the board, when I look at a Kansas city and see what they do, and even with the Eagles, how I don't think they're going to be as good as they think they're going to be, but they're constantly trying to get better. Yeah. If they screw up with a player, we've got no problem admitting that we screwed up. Let's move on and get the next yep. guy in here. Yeah, yep. I, and that's the thing I've always said with the Eagles. And hey, I got some good friends that are Eagle fans. So, but I have some that I hate. But but what I would say is I always <laughs> have give credit to the Eagles organization because they try. Mm -hmm. they, they, yeah. they have issues. They had issues at running run defense. They went out and got a couple guys, Sue and, yeah. and and the guy with the job. So they've always done that. They had some issues this off season and they went out and addressed them again, like you said, with a quarterback that was getting paid a lot of money, but they know how to work the cap. And unfortunately the Cowboys just don't seem to know how to do it. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be interesting, but maybe, you know, the Cowboys, maybe they get some, some dogs in the draft. I, that's what I say they need. They need some dogs. They need some dogs. Maybe they could pick up in free agency that are left over. They don't, they've got enough superstars. They need some guys, you know, like, yeah. like Eugene Lockhart said, you know, bring your lunch pail that they, all they care about is winning and that's all they worry about. They don't, because with the Cowboys comes the notoriety, it comes the brand, it comes all mm -hmm. the stuff that goes with it. But I've said, if the Cowboy, you win a Super Bowl, if these players listen to this, you win a Super Bowl in Dallas, you're a oh. made man for life. I've seen it like Kenny Gant. You'll remember Kenny Gant. I mean, yep. he was a special teams guy. He had the oh, shark hat and mm -hmm. all that. He's still beloved. He's still doing appearances. He still does the tailgates. He still does mm -hmm. all that. And, and you're talking 30 years later. You win a Super Bowl, you're a made man. And that's what yeah. hopefully you guys understand is, is, man, just just get us a damn Super Bowl. <laughs> Amen on that one, man. I, I'm getting too old to keep waiting, man. Um, I don't know how many more years I have left, but I hope I see him hold up another one sometime in the very near future. Oh, oh it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> well, what do you think about that, Kelly? I, I couldn't agree more, man. I mean, I'm 
I feel like I've I've been been waiting on this waiting on this uh, Super Bowl, the sixth Super Bowl for a long time, man. And you know, and it's funny because I feel that a lot of times as a Cowboys fan base, man, we're um we're we're desperate for answers, man. We're, we mm-hmm. we we you know, you look at it and every year it's a little something different. This year the buzzword is the culture thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, that that's the thing. Um it's it's always something every year that kind of polarizes the fan base and and I think this year more than any in the past honestly as is at the quarterback position and and I think that the Cowboys haven't done a great job in really you know putting p- squashing that right mm-hmm. because they've they've done this by their own their own actions and the way that they have kind of negotiated with Dak Prescott right we don't we don't know where they stand with Dak. I, I, I don't. Uh not by anything that they've said, not by anything that they've done. Mm-hmm. I mean, they sit there and they and they talk about that. They'll say good things about Dak, but then they'll say negative. He says Dak's our quarterback. But then I'll also say, you know, Dak can play better. He should play better. We expect him to play better. Um, you know, it's these it's these things that they throw out mm-hmm. and it's like chum. It's like chum into the water. And here come the sharks, man. They're just eating that shit. They're eating that shit up, man. The Dak haters are all around. Like, they don't have faith in Dak. Like, if Dak was your guy and you had faith in him, we should have had Dak extended, or we should have had his deal done, reworked, extended, before the start of free agency. How about last year? You know, because yeah. I don't understand the whole thing of waiting because it just costs you more. If they had done it last year before everybody started getting their $50 million deals, you've been ahead of game. You know, the whole thing we talked about last year, you know, paying CD. Why are we still waiting to pay CD? Are we waiting for Jefferson to get his deal? I, that, I don't so know. So it'll go up even more? I, it, it doesn't make any sense. It, it, the way they did the same, no. I mean, they, they just continue to do that. They wait, well, they, they wait, did, they, they did wait. The same. They did the same on the rookie deal. And you and you sit yeah. there and you you got, you know, we had fans and rightfully so saying, what the hell are we doing? Why aren't we being aggressive with the QB on a rookie deal? And they waited and they waited and they waited. And then they and franchise tag him. him. Meanwhile, Carson Wentz gets his deal. So we got to beat the Carson Wentz deal. And it's like, you've got these quarterbacks that are getting extended and the Cowboys are sitting there waiting and waiting. And then the same thing, like, like Mark said last year, they could have probably done something last year. But what happens? That goes out. Second, he's a runner up in the MVP, has a great season, his best statistical season um, this year. I mean, he's he was outstanding in, in the regular season. Obviously, got off that slow start in the postseason, and that's what everybody's going to remember. They're going to remember the interception, the three and outs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's what they're going to remember. But he was a good quarterback. I mean, if you look at the quarterbacks around the league, there are other teams that would jump all over the chance to get Dak. And that's the other thing that pisses me off is that if you don't have the conviction that Dak's your guy, then then why don't you try to work out something to get him out of Dallas but get compensation for him? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you see what these other quarterbacks have gone for and you see what people are willing to give. I mean, what was it a six-round pick for Fields? Yeah. How many, how many playoff games yeah. has Fields played in? <laughs> I mean, the fact that he playoffs. Don't talk fact, about playoffs. They even had a winning season. Oh, but the, the, shit. They just in the Chicago. Potential. Give him a break. But no, I know. But the, it's the potential that he could develop into something that they're willing to invest that kind of pick. There's no potential yeah. when it comes to Dak. You've seen what he can do. He's yeah. not over the hill. He's not aged. He's not injury prone. He's mm-hmm. a guy that can come in and he can instantly win you games. And if you build around him and build around him smartly, I go. believe he can win you a Super Bowl. I don't care what anybody says. It's a quarterback's the most po- important position on the field. And the Dallas Cowboys have one that is in the top 10, in the top 10. So you can't tell me that he cannot win a Super Bowl when we've seen lesser quarterbacks win the Super Bowl when they have talent around him. I don't even, I, I'm going to be out. I'm not a huge, not trying to knock Jalen Hurts. I don't think Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback. I do not. And guess what? He made it to the Super Bowl because the Eagles put a all-star elite. They put a great team around him, yeah. built around him, and took him to Super Bowl. Is Brock Purdy this great quarterback? No, I don't think he is. I think it's the system. I think it's the players around him being able to invest and put 
great players around him that does that. And the Cowboys aren't doing that with Dak. And, yeah. and so that's that's why you don't see the success that we all want to see. Don't blame Dak Prescott for that. Blame the, blame the front office for sitting there this offseason with their thumbs planted firmly up their asses while everybody else is making moves. Well, here's what I'm going to ask, okay? Do we look at this and say, the 12 and 5 team that we just had. Do we look and say today is it a better team than it was then? Today are they better? Or today are they better? Oh, uh, I got to see the draft and everything, but right now no. No. Yeah. So no. if the team is not doing anything to improve and and we'll have the draft, but everybody's got the draft. You've got other teams that have brought in more players that are proven and so on that you have to say they've gotten better. If we have not done anything to improve ourselves other than the draft, why do we think that we're supposed to win a Super Bowl? Why do we think that Mike McCarthy is supposed to overcome not getting more talent when he didn't have enough talent to compete with the other teams? Now, to the Green Bay game, we should have won that game. But I'm going to tell you what I will go to my grave saying that I think happened. When we went from being, you know, fifth seed where everybody's talking about we're going to be playing on the road, the Cowboys stink on the road and everything else, and all of a sudden now we're the number two seed, and we kept hearing about now the Cowboys are going to have multiple games at home. You know, they're unbeatable at home. I think the players bought into that when Sam Williams and whoever else it was were, were already, you know, playing yeah, in Turpin. post. Turpin, they're, they're having yeah, a Turpin. Party. You know, we're, we're playing in our post, our victory party. What do you mean you're, how are you going to have a victory party? We haven't won yet. Yeah. That they literally figured, we've got this one. This is a bye yeah. week for us. All we have to do is just show up put our uniforms on and green Bay is just going to give us the game and green Bay came out there and they bitch slapped them. Yeah. And well, before they, they knew it, it was like, wait a minute, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. It literally was that. Now I, I want to make sure everybody shout out to everybody that's in here watching the show right now. Make sure you go over to Cowboys cave. I'm, I'm gracious for Mike and for Kelly inviting me onto the show tonight. Make sure you sub up tonight right now to their channel they're putting out great work and everything else some incredible interviews that mike is doing he's got all kinds of friends and speaking of one of your friends i'm gonna go back to the whole dak prescott and getting something for him yeah your buddy um 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 um, um damn what's his first dan dan salillo oh dan Cilio. <laughs> Cilio. yeah that guy um he was saying that New England is calling to trade for Dak and would be willing to pay him $60 million. And, of course, Dak would jump at doing that. But I ask you, this is going to be my thing, if you're Dak Prescott, why would you want to make it easy for the Cowboys to move on from, right, just to go to any place? If New England called and said, we'll give you, know, we'll give you a couple of picks and stuff for it, why would I want to go, first of all, to New England, a team that's got a rookie coach, that's going to have to give up multiple picks for me, which means it's going to be harder for them to rebuild than playing through the season, getting my money from the Cowboys, and then picking the team that I want to go to. Maybe I want to go to the New Orleans Saints because I'm from Louisiana. Maybe I want to go to the Rams because, you know, Matthew Stafford's getting old. And I got Sean McVay, and yeah. they don't have a problem yeah. of bringing in talent. Why would I want to go ahead and say, let me help the Cowboys out by hurting the team I'm going to? Would you do that? No, no. And yeah. I like Malik. That's a bad situation for Dak. And I do yeah. you really believe that the Patriots have like the third pick, right? Don't they have a, they're gonna they're not they're not doing that. well and it's I'll, well I'll they did say, draft I'll, Mac I'll, Jones, how'd that work out for him? I know, I know. I'll say that I'll say this too though. I feel I feel like the Cowboys, in terms of the I will say this, in terms of their negotiating, I feel like they kind of got bent over the barrel a little bit with the whole Cowboys Dak situation. And the reason why I say that is because two mm -hmm. things. One the Cowboys were insistent on giving him a, a longer deal, a five-year deal. Dak's team wanted the three-year deal, right? Then mm -hmm. also, so the Cowboys, they bent on that. They're like, all right, we'll do the three-year with the two void years. Then the, you know, then the Cowboys, you know, then Dak's team wanted to throw in the no trade contract, right? No, no trade clause. The Cowboys kind of bent to that. I I felt I felt like at the time that they gave Dak the contract, I felt like they had a little bit more faith in him at the time, but still I feel like you should always that should be kind of a sticking point is is like, all right, we're going to we're going to have to have if we're going to bend to you on one area, we're going to have the trade, you know, trade clause in here. 
so that you don't end up in this type of situation. Because yeah. I felt like even at that time, I felt like that the Cowboys, Jerry still was saying some sketch things when they were extending Dak. He was still saying some things that made you think, is he really like, yeah. is but he really it, all in with Dak? It, you know, see, so the thing. if you're Dak, you've already been NFL, you know, man of the year. You've been, you know, rookie offensive player of the year. You are almost in reach of every Cowboys record. I think you're 42 TD passes away from being the all-time leader and only think 4,700 yards away from having the all-time leads and yards. Now, he has had that 4,900. Got to be fair. Well, <laughs> a true, true. But at least when, when you leave, yeah. your name's still at the top of those lists. I don't care what area you have. Yeah. And it would be nice to go ahead and say, you know what? You didn't really want me. Here you go. You're going to have to look and see my name up there for the rest of my career. Um, for him, you would think that only thing that matters, he's made more money than he can, than he can ever be able to spend between yeah. all of the endorsements and the money he's gotten from the Cowboys. He's gotten about $190 million, which pales in comparison to say Kirk Cousins, who's now going to be over 300. The, <laughs> the thing that, that's that important man, I would imagine right. for him is, is that Super Bowl. And see, this is where I wonder, is it Dak? That's kind of said, we're going to hold off on this contract, or if it's the Cowboys. Because if I'm Dak, I'm be like, look, I'll give you a good deal. I'll give you a home team discount. But what are you going to do to help me get what I want, which is a Super Bowl? If you want me to give and give you a good contract, what are you going to give in return? You got to show me something for me to do that. Yeah, I don't well, ask you agree? Question, Mark, and, and for both of you guys real quick. I want to ask both of you guys a question because this this came to mind when we're talking about Dak. We're talking about contract, right? OK, so was was wasn't Joe Flacco on the last year of his deal when he won the Super Bowl? Yes, he was. And, yeah. and then what did the Ravens have to do? They turned around. They and paid him a huge money. contract. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm not saying Dak is, is Flacco and that he would, you know, win a Super Bowl and then just turn around and just kind of, you know, but. The thing is, what if he does win a Super Bowl for? If he wins a Super Bowl for you, you're not just going to let him away. walk. And now you're having to give him a, a way larger contract. Like if you get him right now, right, you can lock him in. Granted, you're going to have to pay him big money. Mm -hmm. But imagine what that money looks like if Dak wins a Super Bowl this year. And you know I, what? Again, I don't I'm care what it costs. The Cowboys no. Super Bowl, so nobody come run just with Just give him. me a Super Bowl, man. I don't care. Pay the man. Hey, yeah, yeah, no, I'm just I'm if just the Cowboys from, from, went from to the Super Bowl. Do you know how pain, much right? money the NFL would make if the Cowboys went to the Super Bowl? Do you know how oh, many yeah. Cowboy fans yeah. would descend on New Orleans for the Super Bowl? Yeah. Well, they oh, were talking I, about the you Super wouldn't Bowl find a hotel room paid. within 150 miles of yeah. New Orleans. Yeah. No, and that's that's why I say that that's why I always say that when people say the NFL, the NFL's rigged, this whole NFL. I said if the NFL was rigged, the Cowboys would have been a Super Bowl a long time ago because there's yeah. no bigger draw than the Dallas Cowboys, man. Right. Yeah. But no, no. conspiracy theory is though, if the Cowboys were to win it, you think about how much stuff they wouldn't have to talk about. You know, yeah. Cowboys are chokers. Ha <laughs> ha, the Cowboys, they suck. They're no. like, I mean, listen. But it, but at least get the Cowboys to the main event. I mean, you watch you, if you watch WWE, you're not having your two main stars not be in the main event. The Cowboys, the Cowboys are one of the main stars. I mean, let's let's just face it. The Cowboys are are a draw. So at least you could have them in the Super Bowl and have them lose. I mean, at least give me an NFC Championship game if we're rigging okay. things here. <laughs> give, me to a, give me to an NFC title game with some hope that a Super Bowl is around yeah. the corner. Yeah, but and not it, even it, that. It's I tell you, it's frustrating. And hey, Malik has been been hopping in there. He's going to be on Tuesday because he has some things. I owe my, I don't know if I owe a mistake there. Mark, you decide. We had a bet. He said Purdy was going to be better than Dak Prescott last year. I I don't know if Purdy was. I mean, what do I owe him a dinner? Does he owe me a dinner? Is it a draw? What do you? What, I, I, what do you I don't think you Purdy? can compare the two because take a look at at what he's got to work with. Brandon Ayuk, although he might be gone, you know, you end up having Christian McCaffrey, the best running back in football. You got, you know, um, Kittle, right? One of the best yeah. tight ends in football. And you got the most physical wide receiver in football. You've got five, I mean, four legitimate killer weapons right there. Are you yeah. telling me that Dak well, had that to work with? Not, and not only that, though, but what ha what happened when – 
Trent Williams went down. Debo went down. It, yeah. What happened? They lost they three lost in a row. Three in a row. Three in a row. So was Brock Purdy still under center when they lost three in a row? He was, right? I mean, so I'm I'm not – Brock Purdy has arguably, in my opinion, arguably one of the greatest play callers in the NFL right now as a head coach and one of the best built rosters. They haven't been able to, you know, to seal the deal in the Super Bowl, thankfully, because, you know, let's just face it, San Francisco, right? This is to you. Um, <laughs> but – they, they haven't been able to seal the deal, but look at their roster and look at the way that they move, the way they operate, the way they're constant. Like last year, they already had a good defense. They're like, you know what? We're going to bring in Hargraves from Philadelphia, right? You know, mm -hmm. we're going to, you know, we want to get Christian McCaffrey. Like they're, they're, they were making moves to make their team better because they're like, let's capitalize, let's cash in, let's win a Super Bowl. And I mean, I'm honestly quite jealous of the way that they operate and move because I feel like they do things the right way. I feel they're an mm -hmm. enviable franchise to to be enviable over, even though they still have a longer drought than the Dallas Cowboys when it they comes do. to the <laughs> so, so and I and I and I always say this, I do always say this, and I do stand by it. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm I'm enviable the way they do it, but I do say this. It doesn't mean anything if you don't cash in and win the ring yeah. because in 20 years from now, is anybody going to remember that the Niners played in the Super Bowl last year? No, they're not. They're going to remember that the Chiefs won it. They're going to mm -hmm. remember that the Chiefs have another one. Like You don't remember the teams that lost in the Super Bowl unless you're a fan of that team. You remember the ones that won the Super Bowl. So in the end of it, they can be as you know whatever competitive as they want, as great a great run yep. as they yep. want. They haven't cashed in on the ultimate goal, and the Cowboys haven't either, and that's what you know, that's the main dollar question is what do we have to do to get that number six? Yeah. If we knew, we'd be running the team, right? What we have no. to do is hog tie Jerry and Stephen Jones and throw them in a closet and let somebody else run the organization. <laughs> well, we're going to be out at at t one of these times, so we're going to have to maybe gather a group up and do that to get this thing going. But we've been rolling for over an hour. And, uh, you know, I'm like Mark. I'm, I'm older and I'm on the East Coast, so it's a little bit later for us. So, yeah. Uh, so so I, I just, we, we can wrap this thing up. But I just want to obviously say, Mark, man, it's been an honor to have you in. Been a bit, been a big fan of yours, and and I appreciate all the support. I've seen you hopping in some of the interviews that we've done with some former Cowboy players. It's like I said, mm -hmm. man, we can't get no Super Bowl, so I'm gonna we're gonna bring some Super Bowl <laughs> champions into the cave and into Cowboys Nation, and hopefully maybe it'll rub off on some people. You know what I mean? You know, I, I actually love that you guys do that. Um, like this weekend is um, the the big Chantilly show, although there's not as many uh, legends that are gonna be there. I always love to go, even though I've gotten like Randy White's autographed like 10 times and i usually just give it away and stuff but so many of those great players people don't know their stories and the things and all that and it really drives me crazy because you know we got all these fans out there saying we got five rings but they don't know anything about those guys that actually made those five rings and so that's where i love it you know keep bringing those guys on man and keep letting them tell the stories and stuff and those of you that are out there if you understand what it was really like to to really see what football was like Go back and look at some of those old games and things. You know, every other play would be now unnecessary roughness. The way they played was totally different than what you see right now. And that's what yeah. football really was football. And I really appreciate you guys bringing me on. Yeah, no, we, we appreciate it. And hopefully we can do it again. And more importantly, hopefully we get to see out at and We'll have to figure out if uh, the game that you might be going to if you go to one and hook up. If not, we got some road trips to Atlanta or, or, or Carolina. So Definitely Carolina yeah. is one of because that's that's just right down 95. So yeah. definitely looking at Carolina. We'll definitely be at the Washington-Dallas uh, game here. We do a big tailgate there every year, and we'll do a couple in at and uh, awesome. Well, we look forward to it, man. We appreciate it. Kelly. Any final thoughts? No, man, Mark, just thanks for coming on, man. It was good to have you on long overdue, man. Big fan. Love watching your stuff. And for once you actually look like you're relaxed. You're not doing anything. I activities, <laughs> rebuilding, remodeling or doing anything, man. But I do love that you guys, if you're not, if you have not gone over to Mark's channel, make sure you do that and subscribe as well. I know he plugged us, man, but the guy is great. I mean, he'll do a video from the car he's in a drive through. He's in a home Depot. I mean, this guy, is all over the place, man. And he's bringing you this news, mobile, breaking, as it's coming. I swear, every time my little, I get a little dinger, it's Mark, and he's, he's breaking a little something. Motherfucker, as as yeah. 
I get, the news, I get the news from Mark pretty much before ESPN even breaks it on my phone. So I'm just saying the guy is a YouTube legend, man. So if you have not went over to his channel, please do that and subscribe Definitely. because he's giving great content. Yeah, so, no, no, awesome. Great stuff. Yeah. We appreciate it, guys. You guys have a great evening. Thanks for hanging out in the cave. We'll see you guys soon, man. Take care. Have a good evening. Give me somebody that's hungry. Give me somebody that's hungry. I need somebody. <laughs>